Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at organization tips. Tips that will improve your workflow, how to easily delete things, select multiple things. Um, these are my tips that I use all the time and they're really going to improve your workflow in FL. So the first thing that I want to talk about is deleting unused audio clips. So here I just put together a project. We have some hats, we got a little kick, a little bass, a downlifter, but you can see we have less samples than here. So there are samples that aren't on the playlist that exist in this pattern channel rack. And if you're uncertain what's there, what's not there, especially when you have lots of samples, an easy way to get rid of samples that are not used in patterns or on the playlist is to go up to tools, go to macros, and go to purge unused audio clips. So watch this. And just like that, you get rid of unused audio clips. This is going to free up your RAM. If they're being loaded up in your RAM, this is going to free up, you know, space for your project. And that way you're going to be able to organize it much better. The second tip is going to be in regards to unused patterns. So here I only have one pattern and it's called hats. If you go to this picker right here, the patterns, you can see this little dot. And what does that dot mean? That dot means that the piano roll is empty. There is nothing in that pattern. So if you were making leads and you removed the piano roll, basically all of these are safe to delete. So you can go ahead and right click and delete and delete that one. So anytime you see that circle, it means that that pattern is empty. And we can see this too. If I go ahead and right click and cut, we can see that that is empty, but we'll put that back. The next tip is going to be how can you select multiple samples and route them in a faster, efficient way. This is very useful if you guys have like 40, 50 stems and no one wants to route them one by one. There was a time when I was doing that. So to demonstrate, I'm going to um, clone a bunch of these and I'll leave these uh, not linked to anything. And how can we route these to like four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So all you have to do is take your mouse, click and hold. Okay, so we have these selected. Now go to your mixer and go to where you want to start. I'm going to start on insert number five, right click and go to channel routing. And don't do this one because that'll route everything to the same rack. We're going to select route selected channels starting from this track. And there we have it. Five, six, seven, eight. They all have their own insert on the mixer. I mean, we can see that that has updated accordingly. Another tip I'm going to say for organization is let's say you're working on a something like what we have here. When we go to our kick, we can see that sausage fattener is there. Kickstart is there. Maybe you have like seven, eight plugins. Maybe you have only a few, but you don't want to redo that effects rack again for something similar. Let's say you want to copy that effects rack to something. Now you could save that effects rack and that's in the file save as save mixer track state. Now, that's one method. You can save that, especially for when opening a new project. You can bring that effects rack back in. But if you want an even faster way, you can just right click file. Now click this, but click and hold and then drag that into your desired track. So we'll put it into four. Now the name will be the same name and you can see there it has sausage fattener and kickstart. So we can say like press F2 kick number two. So these are some really cool tips that are going to really improve your workflow. Um, another cool thing that we'll do here, we're going to unlink these from those mixer tracks and we'll see if this works. How can we know other ways of like what's not being used? Maybe we don't want to purge them, delete them right away. If you go to tools and you go to macros and you click on select unused channels, we can see that not only did it select those four that I unlinked, but also this automation clip is not on the playlist. And so then we can delete them. And what I would suggest here is I'll do macros purge. We got rid of that. And we do know that the automation clip is unused. We can also see it here. So you can delete it. And there we go. Now we have a cleaner playlist. One final few tips uh, that I want to give is just in regards to the mixer 
Um, as you guys know, if you hit F2, you can go ahead and give something a name and make sure you name things accordingly. Um, even though we're working with audio, we're visual people. We're looking at the stuff. And I always like to color coordinate what I'm doing in segments, percussion, bass stuff, synth stuff, effects. It makes it much easier as the project gets bigger. And if your project is pushing beyond you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 tracks, go ahead and switch this to whatever mode that you like, compact, wide. Um, when my projects get big, I switch it to the wide. And um, in regards to the color, you know, choose a color that you like. You can also create a custom color. You can choose something and have that saved. So that's nice. Um, and one thing that I like doing is, let's say I want to color these all together. I can go like this. And we what we did was we held control, click and hold, hit F2, and we'll put them all as, let's see, yellow. Let's see if I can give them all the same name. There we go. And we can change the name. And another cool thing that we can do is we can select them the same way. Hold control and click and hold with your mouse. And if you hold alt and with your keyboard arrow keys left and right, you can move them accordingly. You can swap them over here. You can move them over here, whatever you like. And if we're saying, hey, that's an eyesore. I don't like that color. Usually effects, I like to put them like blue or something. There we have it. One final tip I'm going to leave with you guys is regarding the effects. So as you know, you can always move effects up and down. But did you know you can also use your mouse wheel? Scroll up, scroll down, change the sequencing. That way, if you're thinking, hmm, is the EQ bit better before the compression? Is it better after the compression? You can make quick adjustments on the fly. And this way, you'll be able to quickly be able to tell what you like, what kind of sequence you like for your effects rack. So that wraps it up for this video, guys. Uh, I came back from Kashmir on Friday uh, in Toronto at Union Nightclub. It was an amazing experience, to say the least. Some exciting stuff happened. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All these tips should work for FL Studio 12 users, but if you're using 12, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using FL Studio 20. It's amazing. It's pretty much the same thing, just with some subtle improvements. And that's a wrap. If you guys want to leave me any suggestions, I really appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and drop a comment, drop a like. Make sure you guys are subscribed and hit the notification bell so you're alerted of my uploads. And I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care.